Hello everyone, welcome back to my next video. Today we're going to meet Grant and uh, find out all about his really amazing home. So the, your question is, is why did I choose to live in a van for the time? Um, way back in 2006, I invented a data standard for educational content that I hope will make it so that everybody in the world can get a complete education for free, even without connection to the internet. So working a regular job and trying to do this was just wearing me out. And so I just wanted time to think and work and learn all the stuff that I needed to learn to be able to finish that. And there's no way I was going to do that paying way too much rent. So that's the main reason. Plus, I just got sick of paying rent. <laughs> so you're not retired yet? No, I'm not retired. I got three and a half years to go. Um, I do get a little bit of disability from the VA. So how are you uh, supporting yourself out here? Um, right now I'm living on savings, but I took your wise advice and went to the big tent and the very first camp host company that I talked to, I just walked in and said, I can build and fix almost anything. Um, I used to be a network manager and I used to run my own business. Um, and they were like, you're hired. And like practically invited me to go meet their parents. <laughs> Are you full-timing? I'm full-timing, full-timing. How long have you been doing it? I've been on the road since November 7th just before uh, Jamie's van build party. Um, but I boondocked in this in Austin, Texas for about a year before in, then. In town itself? In town itself. Uh -huh. um, there was a business that uh, they really liked me and they literally invited me to park in their, their parking lot. Um, so I parked in their parking lot, went to McKinney Falls State Park the most awesomest state park, um, and got a shower every day, and then went to work, and I worked in the evenings, and then I came out of work and at 12.30 at night and just basically commuted back up to my parking spot and slept, and then got up in the morning and spent all day at Wendy's. <laughs> um, Sounds like a good plan. Yeah, and then before that, I boondocked in a really, really crappy beater RV that I paid only a thousand dollars for, but I lived in it for a year. Yeah, thousand dollars for a year of rent ain't bad. Right. So, <laughs> so during that time while you were working and and camping in your uh, your minivan, uh -huh. you were able to save a bunch of money. Yes, I was able to save a lot of money, and I was saving up money to finish my undergraduate, and to do things like um, get extra durable brakes, do all the possible repairs I could find maybe needed done on on the the car to make it you know reliable um and then also um while i was parked on the street some guy rear-ended me and the insurance company paid off my car loan and gave me 1200 bucks and that put me a whole year ahead of schedule right uh, that's such a good idea folks if you've got a business idea that you need to develop uh the being out here is a way to do it yeah i got you know one thing on my bucket list and that's it to get this program going. Yeah, yeah. Okay, good. And another really important lesson here is that you can work and save, and that will get you out here so you can work on your dreams. Exactly, exactly. So whatever your dream is, uh, this is a good way to actually make steps yeah. to make it happen. Yeah, I mean, pff, I hated that job, you know, but I worked at it for two and a half years saving money because, you know, that's what you do. Right. <laughs> So really, this is a way to make your dreams come true. Yeah. Your and dream it, it, of it helping is, yeah. the world. Yeah. It's, it's, it's definitely a way to do it. Yeah. You know, um, I'm fortunate in that I'm able to, you know, build and fix almost anything. So that helps. Um, but I honestly believe that lots of people can learn to build and fix at least the stuff they need a lot easier than people think. Everybody's yeah. so afraid to pick up a jigsaw, pick up a drill. Oh my goodness, I may do it wrong. Well, so what? So tell us about your uh, minivan. Uh, well, it's a 2008 Dodge Grand Caravan. I love the Dodge Grand Caravan as a choice for a minivan to live in because it's, it's, the sides are more vertical. 
The back is more vertical, so there's more shoulder room, more space. Um, almost all of this body style comes with what they call stow and go seats, which fold down into the floor in the, the middle and the back. Well, if you take those out, A, you've lost a good 300 pounds of weight in the car, and B, that's a ton of space. And you'll see once you, you know, I, I do the van tour part, I got space I ain't using yet. So you actually removed the seats, yep. but you still have the floor, and that's a big hole under there. Well, the, the panels that they had for that were kind of pain in the rear, so I just cut my own panels and okay. put, put them in there. Makes yeah. sense. Yeah. Well, do you mind if we take a look around and see what sure. you've got going here? <laughs> sure. Grant, why don't you go ahead and tell us about your basic layout here. You've got a lot of cabinet and storage on one side and your bed on the other. Right, and the, you know, like I said, the bed is just a board laying on top of tubs, and each tub has a different, you know, type of stuff in it mostly. And then there's a little bit of room back side of here to jam things. I've even got a whole shovel in there. And then these are the tubs that the bed is sitting on. And as you can see, the bed is just a loose board stacked on top of these tubs. Um, and two layers of foam, um, memory foam, and Joanne's cushion foam. And I use this afghan to um, let air get in there mm -hmm. so I don't get moisture build up. And you can see I've cut this board to fit right in here. Oh, and there are pictures, there are better pictures of this on the Cheap RV Living Forum. So I've got a whole build, series of build pictures on, on the forum that people can look at and see how I put all the pieces together and everything okay. with like in-depth descriptions because I want people to see that they can do this stuff too. The storage, you got a space? Yeah, there's so space, you, there's space for storage up. there behind where those tubs sit. And then I can close this door. On the left side is the cabinets that I built. So the cabinets are designed primarily around these plastic storage drawers and I definitely recommend just plastic storage drawers. They're yeah. lighter, they don't fall apart. Um, and then I needed space for my two laptops. These are, are two separate laptops, um, both of which either the keyboard comes off or the keyboard folds all the way back. And so my keyboard just kind of pops out there and I use my glasses case to hold that up. And I can work all wow. day in here. So those are your actual laptops in Yeah. Uh-huh. Oh, wow. And then because both of these laptops are laptops that you can um, write on with a stylus, I've made this frame so that it can be latched into a different positions. Yeah. Tuck this away. And there's just enough room between those two little legs back there for that keyboard. And then the whole thing just closes up. Nice and desk setup. And there's my right. kitchen counter. And uh, this is just uh, more storage over here. Yeah, and all the rest of it was just whatever would fit. You know, I mean, I measured how wide I needed this to be. Well, so this, this panel comes all the way down, so that determined how wide these are. And then whatever left over was for these. And I literally just guessed at the height of things. This came out so insanely perfect. Yeah. This just, and there's all my water. Mm -hmm. I've, I find I would use no more than about a half a gallon of water a day. And people aren't going to believe that, and they're going to think I'm dehydrating myself. But uh, I literally can get by for two weeks on eight gallons of water and have water left over. So, and under the, uh, there was a stow and go seat back here too. And you can see. That's enormous. There, Yeah, I mean, look how far back it goes. Yeah. It goes way up to here. Yeah. Um, and so this is my trunk. And believe it or not, this is a scanner. I've got a book scanner in there that I just can't 
bring myself to get, give up. Right. <laughs> I bought it when I was going to, to graduate school. I figured I'd be scanning lots and lots of stuff. Yeah. And well, now I just can't get rid of it. Right. <laughs> so another question is, how do I stay warm? Right. And I use this. This is the Gas One dual fuel. Oh yeah. That you did a, a review of. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh, awesome! It comes with that hose. And what I've done, and there are going to be people to scream, is I've cut this out, and I filed down those edges, and then I covered it with with Gorilla Tape. Huge fan of Gorilla Tape. So I can um, detach the hose from the the Coleman. Uh, green bottle and fold it up and put it in here without taking it off of right here all the time because this connection is kind of just didn't seem like it'd be too durable for me if I was constantly connecting and reconnecting it um, and I use the green bottles which I refill from a 20 pound bottle that is tucked uh, in the floorboard up where the passenger's feet would be and the way I see it if it's completely, you know, if, if, if it's got crumple zones to protect the passenger's feet, then a big steel canister should be fine. Um, so that's what I do for heat um, and for cooking and everything. And I was concerned that it would be too much heat for up here. But right. that heat dissipates really fast. If you uh, just keep your eye on it, check it, yeah. make sure but, it doesn't get hot. Yeah. It, my, my rule is as long as this is no hotter than a dashboard would be in the summertime in Texas, mm -hmm. I'm safe. Yeah, absolutely, sure. <laughs> this is my only pot. That's it. Um, kind of want a frying pan, but for my refrigeration, I got what, um, this is the Alpicool brand um, DC compressor fridge. And it's a 23 quart. Um, and yep, it's yeah, 23 quart. Uh, refrigerator you could set it down to freezer if you want and so it also has this tiny 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 little freezer compartment and it'll freeze ice oh you should have seen the the adorable little ice tray that came with it uh, but it was worthless <laughs> it works pretty good it uses almost no power and as you can see i've got it stashed inside of this coleman cooler that is a really clever idea well it's only because i already had the cooler Right. And I got the thing and I was like, you know, that'll almost fit in there. And it it did almost fit. I had to cut about a half inch out of the front side. And you can see I had to cut out some of the roof, roof lid. <laughs> and I had to cut out that back edge there so this, this lid would open up. But there's also an inch and a half um, layer of poly iso in the bottom. So at the bottom is super well insulated. Um, and then I put this stuff, which is the stuff you get mm -hmm. to, uh, um, for when you're caulking around windows. Yes. And I tucked it around all the edges yeah. so, you know, the cold air won't get out. And then, you know, well, I needed something to stuff in there too. So, well, I had this, so that's, that's where it goes. And I cut out all these holes for all the, the, the vents for the refrigerator. And I covered them up with, uh, again, Gorilla Tape. Um, I think that's one of the smartest things I've ever seen. This is not the most durable plastic, you know what I mean? So I wouldn't dare set that plastic out here on these rocks. But I can set this cooler out on the rocks and I can sit on it and never have to worry about damaging the cooler. Absolutely. So That then, is really, really, really clever. There. And I, I left as much cord as possible so I can, you know, Pull it out if I need to. And just slide up in through here to get in. And, you know, do my stuff. Uh, and yes, this does take up a little bit more space, this cooler, but I like the insulation and just the durability of it. Right. This is on those, you know, one of those lift up shelf things, mm -hmm. right? And I cut this so it would clear that and finished it and painted it and everything. I was like, oh crap, I didn't check to see whether the thing would open. But it does, it actually opens too. <laughs> wow, that's great, yeah. The inverter has two power strips plugged into it. That's all I do for, for wiring. So I just got a power strip here that I use for when I'm running tools and a power strip up by my computers. And that's it. 
Uh, I have 12 volts run into a terminal strip tucked under there and a terminal strip tucked up in here. And they're each on their own separate fuse. And then this is wired into that. So I have to ask this. Everyone wants to know, how do you go to the bathroom and how do you shower? Okay. This used to be my poop bucket. Right. It's your standard five gallon bucket with a, what are they, what's the brand of this? Gamma. Gamma lid. Gamma seal lid. Um, and now I just use it for my trash can. I decided to switch to a uh, porta potty. Uh, and that's in the shower tent. In the shower tent. It's just more convenient for me to, to even pay to dump it um, than it is to have bags and bags and bags and bags of poop that I'm trying to throw in a dumpster. Right. And so how do you shower then? When I'm shifting between one spot and another, because I'm pretty much just hanging around the, this area, um, I go to the La Paz County Park that's eight miles north of Parker, and it's two dollars for a shower. Wow, that's great. Yeah, and if you pay five whole dollars, then you can get a day pass, and if all you've got is a porta potty, then they'll let you dump that at the dump station. Now, normally for an RV, they charge 10 bucks, but you tell them, oh, it's just a porta potty, and they're like, oh, okay, fine. Um, so for five dollars, I get shower all day, um, dump my porta potty, fill the water in the porta potty, and then I buy my drinking water. At, they've got a little kiosk there. And do you have any idea how much you're living on per month? For food alone, I'm getting by on about $150 a month. Keeping my gas as low as possible by just not driving around and not driving very far. Right. So literally $200 a month. Well, you have your fixed expenses. Right. But you have a little something from the VA that's covering that. Almost and, all of that, yeah. yeah. And how much is that? Um, the VA gives me uh, $140 and like 36 cents because I got tinnitus. And that covers my phone and my insurance all but 30 bucks. So food, gas, that 30 bucks, that's my expenses. So that was like $400 a month. I know. You're living, you're living on $400 a month. Yeah. Wow, that's pretty amazing. It can be done. It can on be very, done. very, very little It can money. be done. Well, now, a, a, a benefit or a, a, is because I worked those extra two years past when I wanted to keep working. Right. Believe me, me I did not want to keep working. Um, but I did it, and I got the, the computers that I wanted. I got the, the, you know, all the stuff that I needed. I saved up enough money to buy the materials. Now, the materials for this cabinet only cost me like 150 bucks. You know, it was this solar thing that Oh, yeah, that's outrageous. <laughs> yeah, especially you bought high quality. Everything I got, yeah, all really good, good quality stuff, but now I don't have to worry about it. Right. Grant, well, thank you so much. Uh, thank do you, you have any uh, social media you want to tell people about? Um, well, there's this website that I go to a lot. Uh, you might have heard of it. <laughs> it's called cheaprvliving.com. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, my username on there is love, care, thank, do. And I'm probably going to start a YouTube channel called Love, Care, Think, Do, um, where I'm mostly going to talk about, uh, well, the, the class that I gave at the RTR, which is, you know, you can build a, um, a decent, you can do a decent van build with minimal tools. I mean, I did, you can do all of what I did with a drill, a jigsaw, and some hand tools. That's it. Grant, thank you so much for sharing your home and your life with You're us. You're welcome. Thank a lot you. Of, a lot of really great lessons here, folks. Stay at a job you don't like for a few <laughs> years. Save a bunch of money. I mean, that's just a great idea. So yeah. you have an emergency fund. You got exactly what you want. Mm -hmm. Really, really good idea. Uh, organize your stuff. Use the stow and go. Mm. You just got some really, really good ideas. Put a fridge inside a fridge. Really yeah, yeah. great. Inside ideas. a cooler. <laughs> that's just really, really a good idea. Yeah. So, folks, I know you got some great ideas here, and I'm, I'm glad about that. If you did, like us on YouTube, subscribe to the channel, and we'll talk to you later.